Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the very first weekly coaching call Q&A that uh, we're going to be doing now here. Uh, excuse me real quick. I got to finish writing a note I just thought of. Cool. So um, as I said, I'm going to give a quick um, lecture, I guess. I hate calling it a lecture because um, I feel like it's a, you know, like parents used to lecture us and teachers used to lecture us. But this is more just uh, thing, you know, topics that that either come up with my coachings um, from the week or um, just something in, in my own personal journey that's going on that I feel is pertinent and want to talk about. And hopefully it um, resonates with you wherever you're at in your journey, whether it's, uh, you know, right now in this moment on what is today? Today is May 28th, 2022. Or maybe you're watching down the road and it resonates with you then. But, uh, you know, welcome everybody that's, that, uh, that's shown up today and everybody that will show up in the future. Um, I just want to say, I wanted to start doing this. this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, and I've just, I've really been trying to figure out how, how to do it and not, not in the technical sense, but in the sense of how do I want to approach it? Cause I've approached so many things in my life, but especially teaching things like that, coaching, um, from different, um, what, let, let me say, why, so like, why am I doing it? And I found most of them haven't been long lasting because they weren't um, they weren't a true calling in, in a sense, like I was doing it for the wrong reasons or expecting a different, you know, uh, a certain fulfillment from it that it wasn't designed for me to do. And that that'll be that'll be another lesson down the road. But what happened was I as I've been doing work on myself and and um really growing in my own uh, career, my personal life, things like that, especially, you know, the past two years with, with the lockdowns and everything else, uh, been a lot of self-exploration. And what it came to is I really wanted to um, share my perspective, my knowledge, education with anybody who, uh, who it could benefit. And without it costing anything and without, um, there being any end goal other than, um, just helping other people on their journey, which is what I always really wanted to do. I thought I, I thought I'd have to reach a certain pinnacle of my career to do that and feel validated to do that. But I discovered very early on that as we grow, we can, I call shoveling it back. We can pass the knowledge backward to whoever, is on the journey, you know, coming up behind us. Um, and so that's what this is about. So uh, I don't know, you know, uh, I'm excited, nervous at the same time, uh, because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what we're going to talk about. I don't know, like, I love the idea of m being able to share a perspective or a topic with you guys, but then also leave it open to Q&As to see where, you know, where that goes. So it's not just about, you know, uh, things that are important to me. And uh, I feel that those are important conversations as well, you know, what you guys bring to it. So with that, um, something that's really, that just clicked for me, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, uh, I mean, just really like locked in. I've been doing, like, as, as I stated, I've been doing a lot of work on myself during this, uh, the past couple years of um, uh, the lockdowns and, and all that's go going on in the world. And no matter what I was focused on, whether it was money beliefs or, you know, my creative career or just personal relationships in my life with my family, healing, things like that. Just recently, and in, 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 I realized like uh, everything that every every topic that I stu have studied and worked on all comes down to one thing, and that's at the core of them, of changing them and shifting 
your life, whether it's, you know, learn how to manifest, whatever, but mindset. And it, it, it wasn't until like I really committed to I'm going to do this thing every week, once a week, that I, it, it all just kind of came together. And I realized, you know, I've studied all, all, all the techniques of acting that, you know, the method acting, and I've studied random people style and things like that. And we, we as actors, we get in this, uh, we get in this belief or this, you know, narrative that, you know, so-and-so, uh, somebody who's, who's successful studied here. And so that must be the technique or the method to study because it works for them. Or, you know, this person studied there. And then there's people who have succeeded, uh, who haven't studied anywhere. They just jumped in and learned and have continued to build in their career. And so what I, what it just kind of clicked for me was, is that, you know, we, we, we can jump around to all these different studios or techniques and things like that. But what separates those who succeed from those who don't succeed? And what I've come to find is, again, in any area of life, it's mindset. And depending on your mindset and what your beliefs are, determine the outcome more so than anything else, than even just physical, you know, action of doing things. So I just realized, you know, <laughs> what if I started implementing that into my coachings with my clients and, and more so starting off where I used to start off with the techniques of acting of, you know, being in your body, being in your breath, um, listening, you know, and forgetting about the script and all that stuff, which are very important still. But if you don't have the right mindset, and when this clicked for me, I just, I had this flashback to the past 10 years of teaching that if you don't have the right mindset, it, it's an uphill battle the whole time. And, and I, I, like, I could go on for days of the stories of working with an individual who's very talented, like just even naturally talented. And they're always doubting themselves and they're always looking for validation from me, from their classmates, from directors, from casting directors. Like so many of my conversations when I'm coaching come, come in and around this um, needing to understand like what does the casting director want what does the director want like you know and we I'm, we've all been there as as actors like we go in the cat like we get an audition and we're like if I could just figure out what they want I'll do it and I'll nail it in that in you know and I'll uh, be successful I'll book the job whatever it is and I'm sure you've heard people say just be you just be you but if we don't have confidence in ourselves if we don't know who we are, then telling somebody to just be you is like, what does that mean? So I, I, I kind of realized that like, if we start with, if I start with the mindset of getting somebody in the right mindset of believing in themselves, of knowing who they are, of um, having confidence in themselves, then whatever I teach them or somebody else teaches them, like it doesn't even have to come from me, but whatever is, 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 is introduced to them in their journey, they'll take that information, they'll utilize it in moving forward because they know they deserve success. They know they deserve um, happiness. They deserve love. They deserve money. They just, and that's why if you look at the, the many people in this, you know, in, in the money world, people talk about this all the time about like, look how many people, um, uh, win the lottery. And then within, I think the average is within three years, no matter how much money they win a hundred million dollars to, you know, a million dollars, whatever, no matter how much money they win, within three years, they're in a worse financial position than they were before they won the lottery. And it's the same thing with acting and, and with, with being a professional actor in Hollywood or New York, or when I say Hollywood, I mean the global um, 
professional acting industry. So just so you know, but uh, I just found it interesting that I know so many actors that have jumped around for years, including myself, jumped around looking for that magic potion of, well, if I, I study Stella Adler, if I study, you know, Chekhov, if I study, you know, this studio, that studio, whatever it is, like, or if I get better, you know, the right headshot or whatever it is. But even in reflecting my own life and career, I've realized that I've had some amazing opportunities come along, especially early on when I first started. And I sabotaged. I, I literally was in my first acting class in L.A. And I remember, you know, I don't know. And it was a it was a Meisner class which I, it didn't make sense to me at the time, like years later it clicked. I was like, oh, that's what all the, the techniques are for, or, you know, the, the, the games and everything. But, uh, but I remember like after class one night walking out and pulling my teacher aside and I said, you know, hey man, I just want you to be brutally honest with me. Am I, am I any good? Because if not, like, if I'm not, I'll, I need to rethink this thing. And I remember he pulled, he just like was Brent, man. He's like, you're fine. Like you're learning, like you're good. And I like, I couldn't hear him because of all my insecurities and everything else. And if I could go back to my younger self then, man, like the things I would say is like what I'm, is actually what this, this and how I teach is all about is like going back to my, um, going back to my, uh, A lot of people didn't get in. I'm sorry about that. Um, is going back to my younger self and saying and saying what what I would say to them. And so, or him, <laughs> them. Uh, anyways, my point to all this is that I realized is that mindset is the foundation of everything because you could take someone with a mindset that says, I don't believe in um, myself. I don't believe in, uh, I, I deserve success. I don't believe I deserve happiness. I don't believe I could be a successful actor. I don't believe that I can make money as an actor. And you can give them all the opportunities and they will, they will find a way to sabotage. It. And going back, I didn't finish my story, but I, I kind of, went off but my first acting class in LA it was Meisner I told you I, I like pulled my teacher aside I was like hey man if I'm not good just tell me and and he was very encouraging but I still didn't believe in myself I still had all these doubts and it was interesting that like at the end of the class the I, I don't know if it was a three-month class or something like that but this teacher brought in casting directors to sit in on the class and kind of give us feedback and things like that we all did scenes and at the end of it this casting director who was um i didn't know who they were because i was so new to the industry but was like a working casting director and like had their own company and um cast a lot of great projects she comes up to me and she goes you know do you have representation? And I was like, no, like this is my first acting class, everything. She's like, I, I think you're really good. And, um, uh, you know, I'd like to get you in and like get you to read for projects and things like that. Here's my card. Give me a call. And uh, there were some things going on in my personal life that I use as an excuse to pack up and leave LA for two and a half years. And I look back at that now and I, because I like in my journey, I've thought as like, oh man, like everybody else gets these opportunities. If I was just given an opportunity, you know, uh, basically things handed to me, but it's not true at all because things came to me, things showed up for me and I sabotaged. Them. And as I've worked on myself through the years, I've really realized not only how many times, um, amazing opportunities were like given to me brought to me and i some i figured out a way to sabotage them and then i and then i became the victim 
that I was just, that I've looked back then. I'm like, man, like if I don't change my mindset, then it doesn't matter what comes to me in the future. I won't believe I deserve it. I won't believe I'm good enough. And we've seen that with so many people in the world, like high profile people, you know, people, and you listen to these actors or musicians or artists, just any artist, but uh, talk about, you know, their drug addictions or, you know, destroying their lives. Or, you know, if, if you really get an actor who's candid um, about the, their journey, they'll tell like there's so many of them that, are, that even still don't believe they deserve what they have. Even if you say they have all these people around them telling them how talented they are, they don't believe it. You've heard the term before, imposter syndrome. So I just had this realization just a couple of weeks ago. I've been really excited to like do start this this uh, series of talks um, to share this because it just all clicked for me. I was like, what's the point in teaching the foundations of acting and the techniques of acting and how to make your own content and how to break down a script? What's the point in teaching all that if you have somebody that doesn't have the mindset to believe that they can achieve what they're working towards. So I started implementing mindset into the, be the beginning of, of my coachings with people of like, let's not worry about being in your body. Let's not worry about all this other stuff. Let's worry about your mindset first. Because if we get your mindset in alignment with what life you want to live or career you want to have, whatever it is, then when I introduce these tools to you you'll have the confidence to, to to use them and explore them and use them to get you to where or to achieve the thing you want to achieve but if you don't believe that you deserve to be successful if you don't believe that you could be um uh, uh a, a list actor hollywood actor oscar winning actor if you don't believe that then you're going to sabotage. And again, teaching for 10 years uh, and six of that was, you know, almost five days a week teaching 20, you know, 20 people, you know, two classes a day, 20 people per class, you know, four, five days a week at times. And the thing that the, the majority of the teachings or the lessons or the things that we, that I had to work on with people looking back, like at the time it didn't even click for me, was all about their belief system and mindset. Like people would come in and they'd be, they'd be talented or screwed if you, even if they weren't talented, you know, but they just, they naturally talented, but you know, I believe, you know, it can, any, that stuff can be learned. I don't, I don't believe that it's like you either got it or you don't like all of it can be, can be learned to a willing person, but there's people that were just like, they were already emotionally open and they had so many elements already working for them, but then they would sabotage themselves by like not doing, like they come in to class and they go, what do I need to do to break through to the next thing? And I would be like, well, you need to work on these things. And they come in the next week and they'd have the same problem. I'm like, did you do what I told you to? Did you do the homework? Did you this? Did you that? No, I, my whole week got busy and all, all the excuses start coming out. And they go, I don't know why I'm not succeeding. I don't know why this person keeps winning and I don't. And it's like because of your belief system and your beliefs, your belief system, whether you're aware of it or not, is creating your reality. It's creating how you perceive the world. It's, it's creating how you perceive yourself. And so if your belief system is not in alignment with where you want to go, it's going to be a hard journey. So what, why, why learn, uh, you know, and I'm not saying don't, I, I, I think you should still, but like, what's the point in learning how to fly a plane? If you don't believe, if you don't believe the plane won't, if you think the plane ever that every plane takes off is at, has a ninety eight percent chance of crashing, like you're not confidently going to get in that plane and explore it. And if I if I told you get in this get in this race car that can go five hundred miles an hour and it, it it can't crash, like it can't crash, like no matter how hard you try, it'll it'll fix 
you know, it, if you're going straight for the wall, it'll just, you can't crash this thing. How much fun would you go? How much, how many risks would you take knowing that you couldn't crash? But if you got in a race car and I said, hey, look, man, if you do one little thing wrong, this, this car's going to explode and kill you and everybody around you. Like you would be like, you know, uh, I'm good. I'm good. But I'm going to stand around the car and I'm going to be in awe of it. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to dream of driving it, what it would be like to be on the racetrack and, and, and doing that, those things. And that's the difference is like if your mindset is not in support of you, if you are not your biggest cheerleader, if you're not the biggest, if you don't believe in yourself more than anybody else in this world, if you're looking for external to validate you because you don't even believe in yourself, then you're not going to take those risks. You're not going to, you're not going to go for things. You're not going to take risks in your life. You're not, you're definitely not going to take risks in your work. And even if I go, look, here's a tool that will uh, ensure your success. You won't take that on a hundred percent and play with it and explore it. If you think that you could fail. So getting your mindset in alignment, getting, changing your beliefs from, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'm talented. Uh, you know, people don't value me. People don't, you know, know how good I am. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I, well, here, here's, here's a term that we use so loosely, and it's such a poison in our community is uh, I'm a struggling actor. Like, if you want to apply that to anybody, anybody's a struggling actor, show me an actor who doesn't have to work for the next job. That's freelance. I mean, that's that's entrepreneurship. Like you have to go out. An employee just clocks in and all the other people do the work to ensure that customers are there, that they have more work to do tomorrow. But an entrepreneur, a freelance entrepreneur, has to go get whether it's an actor or whether it's somebody with an online business or you know, a clothing store on Melrose or whatever it is, they have to take action to get new customers in the door to ensure that they have work the next day. So are like, if you go into a restaurant and you, you're like, who's the owner of the restaurant? And, you know, here, here's, here's Susan or whatever it is that is, you know, the restaurant owner. Do you call her a struggling restaurant owner? No, she owns a restaurant. So little, like little things like that language and things like that, it, it they're a guide map back to the, the language you use, the actions you take, the things you prioritize, tell you exactly what your beliefs are. And so if you want to have more success in your career as an actor, as an artist, you know, or in your life, whether it's money, you know, or love, or just happy, sheer happiness, you have to change your belief system because what you're doing isn't working. If I'm sure you've heard this before. If you look at your life or like your acting career, if you look at your acting career, it reflects back to you what your beliefs are. Like if you're only, you're only getting under five, you know, five and unders, if you're only getting guest stars, if you're not, you don't have an agent or manager at all, no matter what you do, you can't do that. The outside world is not the problem. It's your belief of what you think you deserve or who, who you think you are. One exercise I've given a lot of my students over the years is to just, just as a mantra to themselves, say, I'm, um, I'm, a I'm, a, I'm a Hollywood movie star. And I said, just say it, even if you don't believe it, just say it for a week. And I tell them like, by next week, come back. And, and I just, I'm interested in seeing what happens if you just stick with this for one week. 80% of the people, 90% of the people, they, after one day, they either forgot about it or gave up. They're like, this is stupid. But the 10% who, who just, I, I'm, I'm a Hollywood movie star, I'm a movie star that like after two or three days people would like the stories they'd come back with people were like oh somebody bought me a free coffee and how many times people come up and be like 
where have I seen you before? And these are like some of these actors have, haven't even acted in anything uh, national or a film or anything like that. And they'd be like, do I know you from somewhere? You look famous to me or something. And you could you could start seeing the the exterior world start respond to even that little mantra. Now, imagine if you continued that on. So. The way I'm working with people now, which has been interesting, is shifting the mindset first and then getting into the technical stuff. And it's it's been amazing how how much it's not just about people um, having more success, but it's about their happiness. Like people are enjoying the journey more. Like no matter they're like, I didn't even book the job, but it felt great. Like I went for it, I this, and I, I don't even know if I booked the job, but man, that was fun. And they have a confidence in themselves. They have, they're having joy in their journey as opposed to when I, when I achieve this, when I get this, then I'll be happier, then this will happen. And so because of that, more things are, are coming to them. They're getting more auditions, they're booking more things. But you know, to me, and especially where I'm at right now, as much as I enjoy booking things and working all this other stuff, it, as we all know, there's, there's, you, there's a lot of times there's a gap between this job and this job. Um, and I mean, that's even a belief system that needs to be shifted even in that, right? Saying that, but, um, but, but I mean, that can be a reality. And I say it can be a reality because our beliefs make up our reality, but, but if that is an experience that you're having right now, if you're not enjoying the time between A and B, then what's the point in A and B, right? So if we can shift our mindset and our beliefs about what we deserve, especially, that's a big one, what we think we deserve and, and truly just believing in ourselves, then go study Stella Adler, go study Chekhov or just jump, just write a script and film it yourself or whatever. It doesn't necessarily matter what tools you use, because when you believe in yourself, when you when you have a strong mindset that that goes, I, I want this thing and I know I can have it and I deserve it just because I desire it. Then the tools to support that show up or if I hand you a tool. You figure out how to utilize that in support of yourself. Where somebody with a with a mindset on the other end of that, which is like, I'm not good enough. You know, the director, I don't know, does he like me? Does she like me? Whatever that is, you're you're not, you're not look, you're not expansive. You're not looking for possibilities. You're looking for the safe route, which is very narrow. So think about that. And there's there's I'll share this one technique and then we'll, we'll get to the Q and A's real quick, but for anybody who's got questions, but um, a, a technique that, and there, there's, there's multiple techniques. And again, whatever works for you, but the technique that has worked for me recently, it's very simple. You write down a belief and um, like, let, let's take money for instance. Um, like my great grandmother said to me when I was very young, something about money came up or I don't, it wasn't even about that. I think I said I wanted something. And I remember she's just like, money doesn't grow on trees. And I remember running over to the door, the door and looking out the door at the tree and looking up to see. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't like, there's just leaves up there. There's not actual money. But from then on that, that was such a important, um, impactful thing, uh, moment in my life that that stuck with me. So going back, even in my money beliefs, I wrote money doesn't grow on trees. And then I asked the question, is that ultimately true? Like, do I know for sure money doesn't grow on trees? Like, what if money grew on trees in an alternate universe or, you know, whatever? And so do I know for absolutely sure in the grand scheme of things that money doesn't grow on trees? Well, no, I can't like there, even if there's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a, a percent that there's a possibility money grows on trees someplace. Um, then no, I don't know. So the answer is no. And then I go, 
and then you look you 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 do you look for evidence to prove your point and so then i you know i wrote down well you know technically i mean i know some people argue this but like money does grow on trees because a tree we use trees to make paper and money's printed on paper. And I know some people be like, well, it's a different kind of paper. And it is, it's true, but money is printed on paper was at one point in time. Um, but I could take that tree and I could carve it into a canoe and sell it. Uh, we, we, we cut trees into lumber and we build houses and we sell the lumber to the builder and the builder sells the house to the homeowner. So yeah, money does grow on trees, like it, because you can take a tree and create something, you know, or I can literally grow a tree, a Christmas tree, and I could sell it for money. And in doing that, all of a sudden that belief just kind of crumbles because it's no longer true. So with your acting, it's like, you know, um, I, I'm an A-list actor. Is that ultimately true? Yes or no? No. Or here, better yet, I'll, I'll never be an A-list actor. I'll never win an Oscar. I'll never be a successful full-time working actor. Whatever it is, is that ultimately true? Well, no. Like, how, how can you, in your limited perspective of the world, not seeing the full picture, know that it's completely impossible? And then what's the proof? And like, I did this recently of like, you know, one belief that's is I'm too, you know, I'm too old to break, you know, I'm past my, my not prime, but like that breakthrough, you know, you gotta, you gotta start at a young age. And if you haven't made it by 30 type mentality. So I Googled and I said, how many, how many actors made it late in life? And there's this massive, uh, Christoph Waltz was 52 when he like he was just doing stage stuff just to feed his family and then quentin tarantino um uh cast him for inglorious bastards and since then which inglorious bastards was like 10 years ago he's won two oscars so you know morgan freeman was 54 when he did driving miss daisy which launched his career uh, samuel jackson 45 when he got pulp fiction like there there's a massive list of all these actors that made it after 40 and it just like i knew a couple of them i always went to morgan freeman and sure uh samuel jackson but i couldn't believe the list of people and i was just and i was like judy dench was i want to say judy dench was like 61 when she find when she got um when she got um james bond which made her like she'd been working her whole career but made her who we like a popular like the whole public knows who she is so it just like that belief just crumbled i was like i'm just you know i'm just getting started like i'm good i'm good so that's one way to shift it i mean there there's there's many different techniques but the main thing is is that if we don't shift our belief system and our mindset we're going to keep running into the same obstacles. And that's why we oh, why do I keep dating the same person? Because that's what you think you, you, that's what you believe you deserve. Right. So I could talk about this for days, but, um, but yeah, so I want to share that with you. So just think about that in prioritizing, shifting your mindset more so than let me take another class. Let me take another workshop. Let me do this instead of taking physical action go up here and shift the mental action because this program that's running, it's what's dictating what you see and what you don't um, and what you believe you can have and what you can. Cause again, there's so many people would be like, and I've been one of them that's be like, Oh man, I wish money. You know, like if I just had this money and people have come here and be like, Hey Brent, man, like, thanks. Here's a, here's some money or whatever. And I'm just, and I'll go, oh man, I appreciate it, but I can't do that. Like, I can't take that from you. And I don't even accept the gifts. <laughs> like I ask the universe, I ask God for gifts. And then it shows up and then I no, 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 because I don't feel worthy of it. So what does God, what does the universe do? Okay. If you don't want it, I'll offer it to somebody else. And then I sit there and go, why does everybody else keep winning? 
Why does everybody else keep succeeding? Because I'm sabotaging myself because my own self-belief. So get your mindset in alignment. I'll leave you with this. And then we'll go, I, seriously, we'll go to Q&As. The person that you want to be, that when you dream of yourself, of the life you want to have, how does that person think? Like I, I've said this before with actors, if, and I'll go like, who's your favorite actor? And somebody will say, you know, Angelina Jolie. You're like, okay, if she was to go and if she had to audition for a role, right? How would she go into that audition? Would she go and go, oh, I hope they like me. Or I, you know, I wonder if, no. And they're like, no, she'd go in confident and everything else. Why? Well, she's Angelina Jolie. Yeah, right. Like she had to, she had to have a mindset in alignment with that for her to even become the Angelina Jolie we know. If she never believed in herself, she wouldn't have she wouldn't have got to where she is it starts with the belief and then everything else falls in alignment so i would say here's an exercise sit down and th with a piece of paper you could do that other mindset exercise too but sit down and write out your ideal life i want this is what i want my career to look like here's these are the people i want to work with here's the characters i want to play you know here's where i want to live whatever and then, and then think of that person and think about what their mindset, how, what their belief, their, the beliefs about themselves, their, 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 um, how they go about their day thinking about themselves, how they talk to other people, how they talk about themselves, how they talk about the world. How do they talk? How do they think? There's a, somebody, one person I, I, I uh, follow, Joe Dispenza. And he tells a story about um, he was he was doing a uh, one of his weekend things. And one of the attendees came up to him and was like, how come I'm not living in Santa Fe in my dream house? <laughs> he turned to her and said, because the person who lives in Santa Fe in their dream house doesn't talk like that. So he's basically saying because or he doesn't act like that. So he's basically saying, like, act. Act the way live the life you want to live now not when i achieve these things like start talking start thinking like that person so um yeah i don't want to keep going because we only got 20 minutes left but i will leave it open to any questions whether anybody has questions about this topic or just anything in or around acting in the industry you can go into your your uh chat right there and uh, type anything in. Make sure it says to everyone to make sure I get it. But, um, but yeah. Uh, and there's also what if uh, while that's happening, anybody's typing anything in. Um, I will share uh, there. Byron Katie's the work. Um, you can get as audio book, hardback, whatever is a book that I just finished reading. And uh, she's, she actually does, um, she does her own weekly Zoom stuff where she talks to people and things, but she, um, she calls it the work. And the work is uh, breaking down um, beliefs and things and shifting mindset, uh, which is really interesting. So you guys might check that out, um, is one great resource for that. Um, yeah, so let's see. Make sure. Hopefully uh, um, the chat is working and maybe nobody wants to ask a question, but which is fine too. Don't feel you have to, but also, you know, if you do like, if you do have any question regarding anything, like feel free because maybe a question other people are thinking, uh, but are afraid to ask, or they don't even know that they need the answer to, but they do. Um, so feel free to type in. If nobody has question, I'll talk for a few minutes longer. Um, 
I'll say this, even in, even in my own journey, uh, it's, it's been interesting, as I said, about the, the self-sabotage because so many times, and that's why starting this weekly um, lecture, talk, Q&A type thing, um, I wanted to do this without it being a, um, a end result, a, um, the mindset prior to was, okay, here's the, okay, here's the interesting thing. L lockdown, COVID, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I have many names for it, but whatever you want to call it, it's, it's been interesting for me personally, because, and I think it has for the whole world in many ways. Here's one thing I want to say about this mindset thing as well. It's all coming to me. It's coming back. Everything's been taken away. Like, especially as actors, uh, or I shouldn't say just actors, but anybody in our industry. Literally, everything was taken away overnight in the sense of um, projects that we've been working on for years, months, years, uh, studios and casting directors we've been working to get into their rooms and build relationships with. And like all this is wiped out overnight. And then when it comes back, as it slowly starts trickling back, you have all these mandates, whatever your beliefs are on that. I don't want to get into that, but we have these mandates. We have these restrictions. We have all these things where there's travel restrictions or restrictions to work and all this other stuff. And I, I, I'm, I, I most of my career, I've been a self-starter uh, in the sense of like, I didn't have money to go to film school. So I just started shooting films. I couldn't, I didn't have money to go to acting uh, classes. So I just, you know, I start making films. Um, I learned on the fly and I, I, I used to love making movies just early on. I just loved making movies and uh, shooting things just for the experience of learning and going, Oh man, I, I have this idea. I want to like, if I was a, you know, just like a painter sees it, sees a picture and then paints it on a canvas or draws it. I was excited about like, just, and I would just commit, like when I lived in Florida for a period of time, I had this idea for this feature film and a big chunk of it took place in an airport. I reached out to, uh, to the Tampa international and I don't know how, but I, I just, I didn't know what was possible and what wasn't. And so I just, open up. I was like, Hey, I'm a filmmaker. I want to make this film and I need a terminal. Can I come shoot there? And somehow I, in a very short period of time, talked him into letting me use one of the terminals after hours. And we brought through security and everything else for like three nights we shot in this terminal. And my friends would be like, Hey, I got this idea. And it, I just do it with no expectations. No, just like, let's, let's, I, I, I had this idea for a Coke, Coca-Cola commercial with the Partridge family. So I ended up like, it was this vintage look. I got vintage cars. I blocked off this street from end to end. I dressed the whole street. Um, I had wardrobe made. Um, I got, I had, I took these, these, the actors into a studio and had record them singing the songs and then doing, I didn't know how to do any of this. And I did it like it's, and then I got to LA and I started um, pursuing and, and making my dream real, real. And then I got wrapped up in the business of things. And then it was, everything had to have an end result. Is this going to get me a better agent? Is this going to get me a better, um, uh, is it going to make me more money? Is it, you know, is it going to get my star meter moving all this other stuff? And after years and years of that, I finally just, I kind of had a meltdown because I was not enjoying my dream anymore of being a Hollywood, like all I dreamed of since I was, since I was five was being a Hollywood actor. And then I was a Hollywood actor and I'm, it's miserable. And what, what, 
what lockdown did was put a pause button onto everything and made me like sit and reflect on that and go, I'm not going to step forward again until I'm in alignment with enjoying the process of no end result. Cause what's the point, but in doing that, it also, you know, and like all these studios that I've been working years to get into and to work with and audition for and everything else, all of a sudden they started to show up, but there were all these guidelines and restrictions and everything else that held me back from doing it. And I, and, and it made me realize is like what I teach about being a self-sustaining actor, which I fully believe in. But I was just like, man, man, over the years, I've become so reliant on other sources of uh, nutrition. Like if we want to take it to a, um, like the, you know, teach a man to fish, you know, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, teach a man to fish, he'll eat, you know, he'll never, never starve. But I just had this epiphany of like, man, I've become so reliant on my, of giving over my power and success to outside elements that I've really neglected the thing that got me here in the first place. And the thing that that's how I was when I was a kid, when I just started creating stuff on my own, like there was no, there was no agent, there was no multi-million dollar tent pole, you know, movie or, you know, anything like that. It was just like, Oh, I have an idea. I won't let's, let's explore it. And so why I really wanted to do this, weekly thing um lecture q a type thing was to really in my growth realizing that is like so many so many of us actors artists have become so dependent on other people to to eat uh creatively that we end up um you know, compromising our morals, our, you know, our bodies, um, like, you know, I've had to, like, in my younger days, I would do stunts over and over again. And then I finally get to a point where I was like, man, if I hurt myself, like they go on and shoot another movie and my body's banged up, I can't do another, you know, project. So sitting there going, Hey, I'll do two, two takes of this. And then, you know, moving on unless, you know, so I know so many of us have so much creativity and so many ideas within us, but we don't pursue it because we're, we're we don't think we're good enough. We don't think we're smart enough. You know, we're, oh, well, when I, when I get millions of dollars to do it and I start a production company or, you know, maybe I'll sell it to a studio or whatever, like, you know, if people, if you don't, if, if you're, if you're a creative person and you got an idea and you're like, man, I want to, you know, I, I want to make this with Netflix, but Netflix is like, well, here's all stipulations. And then you go, well, pff, I'm, I have to build myself up the ladder before I have that leverage. Or you could just shoot the damn thing and then sell it to them and do it with the way you want with who you want. And then go to them and be like, I got a complete project. They're more likely to buy it. And you did it the way you want to with the people you want to. But again, it comes back to mindset and believing you can do it. So in that, it's, I just see so much talent and so many ideas out there that aren't being realized because of our mindsets. We outsource our power. And so we have to shift that. I mean, because a lot of these people are run the studios. And I'm not knocking like, you know, the studios are there for a reason. They serve a purpose, a great purpose in many ways. And there's a lot of great people in them. But, you know, their, their, their beliefs and their ideologies and their what they need to fulfill and honor for themselves or their, you know, um, whether it be shareholders or anything else, may not be in alignment with, with yours um, right now and maybe never. So think about that, like worst case scenario, what if, what if, and this is what I sat with is like, what if 
all this happened for my benefit? Like, what if all this happened for me to realize, like, I'm not supposed to go that route. Like I need to take, take my power back into my own hands. I need to start creating the projects. I want to create the way I want to create them. And then, you know, at some point the studios are going to catch up and go, Hey, we, we need, we want this guy for a project or we want to buy his projects, whatever it is. But, you know, we call it in surfy chasing the waves. Like if you're over here and you see the, the waves breaking over there, if you paddle all the way over, by the time you get there, the waves are now breaking over here. So you paddle all the way back. And I actually did this in Hawaii one time. And I, I didn't, I barely caught a wave all day long, but I was exhausted from paddling back and forth instead of just sitting there and, and just being patient and staying the course and waiting for the waves to come to me. But again, that was a, insecurity of not believing another wave was going to come so oh they're over there now now i got to go over there so i tell you know actors all the time is like people i'm like what is your dream role and people go oh man it would be like this 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 and they, they already know what their dream role is like so why don't you just go write that project well i gotta wait until all the stars align for me to be like to possibly get an audition to possibly be get a call back to possibly get booked for it for it to possibly get funding to possibly get made and on down the line and oh somebody possibly wrote that perfect role that also this somebody's a director or somebody or a studio saw it and they you know green lit it and all these elements all these uh, planets and stars aligned for this this dream thing for me to happen happens or you just sit down and write it yourself. Or if you're like, well, I don't enjoy writing. I don't like, I don't think I'm a good writer. Okay, well, save up some money and go find a writer and pay them to go, here's my idea. Let's work together, flush this out. Let's turn this into something. A short film, a web series. I shot a web series, um, nine episodes, shot it on a iPhone 7 with 42 people and most of, you know, 98% uh, of them didn't stay on set more than three hours. And because they just came in and played these bit roles and had fun and were off because I didn't want to burden everybody, like take advantage of people and be like, oh, come for, you know, two days of shooting and with no money. But I was just like, come for a couple hours, let's shoot something, go home. And we shot that. I wrote it in a week with five days. Uh, we shot it a, over 14 individual days, but kind of spread out over a month because of scheduling and stuff like that. We shot it on iPhone 7. We used a Zoom to H2N and boom, boom mic and a few lights we had here and there. Not Most of it was natural lighting. Um, and uh, we shot it just for fun. Um, and it and is one of my favorite projects I've ever shot. I had so much. I worked. I got to work with all the people I've wanted to work with over the years, like students and things, friends like that, because they came in for these little roles and stuff like that. But that that project, of all the other projects I've done in my life, going oh this is going to be big or whatever. That project, which was just like I just wanted to shoot it just to have an outlet. Um, what ended up going, uh, being in competition for two primetime Emmys. So if the desire is there, you're not going to compete with a hundred million dollar studio project. Nobody, I mean, nobody can unless you're a studio with a hundred million dollars to put towards one project. But the idea, you know, the concept, if you look at Issa Rae's, um, I think it, her web series is called Diary of a Black Woman or something like that, that, you know, she did like two or three seasons of that, like the production value is not that good, but her voice and what she was saying, the concept was very clear. And HBO saw it and said, let's develop into a show, which became Insecure, which has been running for five or six seasons now. And she went from nobody knew, knowing who she was to one of the most influential writers and actors in Hollywood overnight. So what if everything we've been going through in the past two years 
has led up to even this moment right here of me talking about mindset to you and encouraging you to write your dream role right now and just do it. I mean, even if it's a two minute short or a five minute short, um, it can be done just to, to capture the idea and go, this is my idea. Look what I can do. Look, look, look at what my talent is. Like if you can, I mean, it's called show business. So, you know, uh, you, people want you to show them what you can do. So show them. If you were a musician looking for a record deal, you would go from cafe to cafe playing. You'd put YouTube videos of you playing and singing to show people what you can do. Why don't you do that as an actor? Why aren't you showcasing what you can do? It goes back to that mindset, right? I'm not good enough. I don't think people like me. Like even today, I didn't know if anybody was going to jump on. Nobody's asked a question today. That started firing up insecurities in me, but I'm just like, hey, man, that it is what it is. You know, maybe not today, maybe next week, whatever, it doesn't matter. And maybe I'm making this video for somebody five years from now that needs to hear it. Who knows? But I'm doing it. I'm exploring. I'm seeing what happens as artists are supposed to do. Put paint on the can canvas. See what comes out. Let, let you know, as uh, I think it was Michelangelo. Okay, maybe I'm screwing this up. I think I'm screwing this up. Da Vinci, whoever did the statue of uh, David, said that, you know, the statue was all always inside that marble. He just revealed it there's so much within each one of you that needs to be revealed and the only reason it's not is because you're not allowing yourself to because for whatever reason your belief system it, i mean it all comes down to belief system and if you don't if if you don't believe in yourself then the excuses come out as to why not and believe me i'm, I'm not <laughs> say this to myself as much as anybody else uh because i could come up with millions of excuses i do every day and it's it's a constant work to overcome the the excuses it's easier to come up with an excuse and point a finger and say that's not fair or they got lucky or why do they keep winning and i don't then really look at ourselves and sit there and go because i don't believe i deserve it and if I shift that, if I believe I deserve it, then it's amazing how the world responds. I'll say this, like I've been, I know we got two minutes left. So if anybody does have a question, get in now. But something interesting uh, happened just uh, this past week. My mom has, uh, has had a, not enjoying her journey uh, that much. Um, in life, like just personally, like as many people don't, especially around money. And I've been doing a lot of work around money beliefs for myself um, because I know that's the only thing that holds back um, what I want to, to, to have in life. But it's interesting, the more work I've been doing, I got on the phone with her last week and she's just like, everything's great. Like, man, I just, I feel so abundant and everything else. And it's like, <laughs> it's like who who am i talking who is this but it's just interesting because it's like you hear this when when we shift ourselves like your job is not to change the world your job is to change you know yourself and the world reflects that and i was like i i've always understood that yeah okay okay but that was the first time it like really i was like holy shit <laughs> like wow the like i can really see the exterior world shifting as i should so if that's true then each and every one of you, if you shift your belief system and your mindset, um, the world shifts for you. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I have to say today. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed this. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me uh, at actorshole at gmail.com. And um, we're going to do this again next week. So hope you check in for that. And uh, until then, uh, have a creative, abundant life. And just uh, know you can achieve everything if you believe you can. All right.